love, you're watching an anti-union video at work. I've come for your paycheck. Versus how unions are actually organized. Sorry, I didn't see you there. This is usually where I come to cry. It's your spot too. How much are you making? That little? I think we deserve better here. Yeah. Do you want to do like a union? So this TikTok by the AFL-CIO is absolutely amazing because it points out something that I think more people should understand. And that is that there is a lot of propaganda that is used to try and take people who want good things and to paint them as these evil, malicious people. In fact, you can see this narrative in movies and television shows and books where somebody comes out with this high-minded idea of making the world a better place, but actually they're an evil villain and the only way to make the world potentially different in any way is to become this terrible, malicious creature that is so authoritarian and wants to take over the world. It's a pretty common anti-communist narrative that's been used against the USSR, China, Cuba, you name it. And it's also something that's used against labor organizers. People say, oh, the labor union, they're just out for your money. That's why they're doing these things. When in reality, the entire thing is all about helping people who feel like their particular conditions are not satisfactory. And here's the thing, most workers to a certain degree sympathize with their bosses and owners, right? They see them as human beings and they're like, you know, I don't wanna make my boss homeless, but I just want a decent wage. I just want a decent standard of living. I wanna be able to not live in my car. Basic necessities of life, you know, things like, I want to be able to afford to go out to eat once in a while. You know, the things that like bring joy and comfort to people's lives. We all want space and time for those things. And those are the people who get involved in organized unions. These are also the same types of people who organize for socialist movements. The reality is, is we see injustice in the world. We see harms being done onto people. We see people in unfair workplaces where they're not paid high enough wages. We see people who are struggling from one form of oppression or another and recognize that we need to replace the systems that exist with systems that are less harmful. That we should have a system that works for working class people where we can all share the wealth of society. And yet, this narrative persists. It's something companies do internally where they try and paint any type of unionization effort as some sort of malicious evil plot to steal wages away from the workers. Unlike, of course, the business owner who just is making a profit. But don't worry, that profits have nothing to do with wages. It's definitely not just the unpaid fruits of your labor. But this same narrative is seen throughout society and that's why I think it's important to talk about like different socialist projects in the past and why it's important to connect this to this. Because there's a lot of effort from the United States, big businesses, and the media to paint countries like Cuba, for example, as some sort of like evil, terrible place. Fidel Castro was such a terrible dictator, when the reality is quite different. And so just using Cuba as an example, if you look at the conditions before their movement for socialism, you recognize that people were working in incredibly harsh conditions, that people were living under a brutally oppressive dictatorship, and that the whole revolution in Cuba was about replacing that dictatorship with a system that actually brought literacy and health care and a litany of other benefits to working class people in the country and ultimately made the country far more democratic. That doesn't mean that every problem is gone because every society, of course, is going to have different problems. But the reason why United States paints Fidel Castro as being such an evil dictator while also painting George Washington as some sort of hero is exactly the reason why socialists and labor unions organize. That is to say, they want to get more leverage over capitalists. They want to make sure that working class people have more power to demand more benefits, wages, etc. It's not about magically making everything utopian and perfect overnight. It's about creating conditions where working class people actually have leverage and power to improve their status of living. But that's exactly what capitalists in the United States don't want. So they paint these working class people as these evil, vicious manipulators and try and convince as many working class people that the people that are trying to help their communities are actually secretly trying to harm their communities. That's why the USSR has evil, terrible gulags, but the United States has good, righteous, justice-seeking prisons. Now, don't mind the fact that the United States has a higher incarceration rate than the USSR ever had, and don't mind the fact that after World War II, people that were imprisoned in the gulags actually got paid the average wages of everybody else, while people in American prisons make 
pennies on the dollar. You know, don't mind that. Our system clearly is the justice seeking system and their system is the evil system. But that's what speaks to the reality. Pretty much every country today has a prison system. And we can all recognize that prisons are not great places to be in. As a prison abolitionist myself, I would like to see a world without prisons. But we have to have fair standards and we have to recognize the broader societal context. In the United States, our systems are designed to the benefit of the capitalist class, which means that every Everything from our prison system to our education system is going to be organized in such a way that benefits the capitalists. And in socialist societies, the aim is to organize institutions in such a way that benefits the workers as opposed to the capitalists. It's not about creating utopia overnight. So of course there's going to be different problems that the United States can point to and say, see, look at what's happening. Just like the fact that labor unions need money. We live in a society that requires money in order to do organizing work, so yeah. In order to have a functioning union, you have to pay union dues. But what are those union dues used for? And that really is the question. In the United States, we pay taxes and that goes to war. In Cuba, they pay taxes and it goes to healthcare and education. And therein lies the difference. But that is also why wealthy capitalists will always tell the story of how what is normal and good and perfectly fine here in the United States is unallowable and evil and terrible when other people do it.